G'day folks, just a quick little video to show you where we're up to because now we've got to get ready to start moving all of this and all the other stuff around the place up to our new farm at Childers. So as I said, the farm is at Childers. It's about a four and a half hour drive north from Ipswich where we're living at the moment. It's over 160 acres, so a fair whack of property that we have purchased. And at the moment, we're basically waiting for settlement. Uh, we did go up there yesterday for a bit of a handover of sorts, just where we discussed with the current owners where all the water pumps from, from dams, how all the um, plumbing and piping and hose work is all set up and plumbed into the holding tanks, the rainwater tanks, and also the dam water tanks. Uh, we really wanted the handover because we've been to some places where it's all so cobbled together. I mean, even the people who live there don't know um, how water gets to some parts because it was done by owners previous. So uh, thank you very much to Beverly and Brian for putting up with us yesterday while we had a bit of a um, look at the, the water and the electricity and other bits and pieces around the place. And I think I forgot to mention that settlement is in a couple of weeks time. That's when we take possession of the property and Beverly and Brian are off on the next chapter of their happy trails. So yeah, um, we will be quite busy packing up around here over the next couple of weeks and then trying to do truck runs back and forth just to get all our bits and pieces up there. So I thought I'd just give you a bit of a quick look at where we're up to with the gardens. We have a couple of wicking barrels, that one there and that one there, and a wicking garden over the back that still need to come out. And we're going to leave a couple of the gingers, there's Gallangal turmeric, uh, finger root, uh, just in the ground down here. And we're going to try and save those papaya, but yeah, I don't like my chances. Our poor little beehive here, it needs to be swapped over into a new hive, that's the natives. We didn't really want to do it through winter, but now we're in spring now. Uh, the hive will be a little bit more active and a little bit stronger. So thanks to Nicole and H from the Naughty Goat Farm, who gave us a new hive for those bees to go into. We just got to get around to doing that very soon. It's basically that top box is rotted out. So uh, that will be on the cards over the next couple of days. But we've also got to do a lot of things like taking cuttings of plants. Steve, this is your dragon fruit. And it should have been up on a little trellis behind some chicken pens and all the rest over there. But yeah, we didn't end up developing this backyard, decided to buy a farm instead. So we will be taking cuttings of the dragon fruit. The black turmeric, we're definitely going to be taking as many rhizomes of that as we can and also the finger root ginger down there which hasn't quite started bouncing back and we also have some Cambodian pond lie ginger over the back we'll be collecting rhizomes from. The mango tree though, I don't think we'll bother about taking any cuttings from this. I'm sure there's a few mangoes growing up in the local area. Just give you a bit of a quick update on the aquaponics thing. She's been up for a few weeks now. All the beds are going fantastic. We're getting a lot of regrowth on the Warrigal greens there or New Zealand spinach as you can see. They have taken off. All the little seaside daisies Bianca wanted to save to move to the farm. They're pretty much well bouncing back and they're getting, yeah, full of green new sprouts. The lemongrass has started to sprout new little shoots off to the sides. And that is my little brassica army. Unknown brassica variety, save the seeds, broadcast them in there and just want to work out what they are. If they're the bok choy, we definitely want to keep them and grow them on the farm. Down here on the little flow through uh, wicking pouch or dual root zone, whatever you want to call it, plants down here are doing fine and these guys will just be lifted up, basically dried out for a day or two because the soil does get a little bit moist in there and then we can move them up the farm and we'll have little ball capsicums uh, at our fingertips whenever we want them. Uh, there's two on there already and we're starting to see loads of little buds up there, so pretty chuffed about that. And a couple of aloe vera pups, I thought I'd try and get them a little bit healthier before I plant them in soil. So they're browning off around the outside, but starting to get green in the center again. Just some ones that we saved from the other plant that was growing in the aquaponics. And just to show you over here, we have a couple of um, Chinese red amaranth. They're just volunteers that popped up in this bed from the media that came from up the top. And we have a carpet in um, spots of the lettuce that I just broadcast in there again. That's just fodder basically for our guinea pigs until we move up. Uh, they are going to be here for quite some time. The move is in a couple of weeks, but yeah, it's going to be held over a month or two. So we need some fodder down here because at the moment they don't really have a lot out there. Uh, what we did is basically mulched the backyard. So all the grass we were cutting for the guinea pigs out the front has gone. The idea is basically to build the soil because especially in that back corner here, the soil was okay. 
It was pretty good, it had been mulched and all sorts of things, but down along the sides in the back corner was all a heavy clay that was dug out from underneath the house. So we thought to make it easy on ourselves so we don't have to come down here and maintain it, and also for our daughter who'll be renting the place along with a few other people, it would be better if we just mulch this for now and then we'll come back and we will do a bit of a, a landscaping design in here. We're thinking probably bushes and, and paths, a couple of fruit trees if the folks want them, we might put a couple in. But for now, yeah, we just wanna make this as maintenance free as possible. And there's a quick look at the fish, a little bit skittish at the moment, but this morning they were feeding really well. Um, hit the pellets fairly hard. Things are definitely warming up here now. It is spring in southeast Queensland, so the water temp is around about 23 degrees without any heating at all, unlike when I had it up underneath the deck. And basically, as you can see, the tank gets sun all day long, and it's keeping a lot more constant te water temperature in there. Uh, underneath the deck, it was only getting it for a couple of hours in the morning, and that was pretty much well lit. So yeah, these guys here, they will be off to a new home soon. Uh, in fact, I'll pretty much will be selling all of this, bar this bed and stand here. Uh, the stand over the back I will be keeping, but that green trough, this um, little section here, which is one grow bed, a sump tank, the moving bed bioreactor, no media, uh, as the media will be going with a fish to a mate's place if he takes the fish, and the radial flow settler and this fish tank and all the associated pipe and plumbing. Not the pump though, because I need the pump where I'm going. Um, that will all be um, up for sale soon. But yeah, more on that later when the time comes. Here's a bit of a look at our messy backyard, just getting things ready to uh, move. Uh, things we're taking from here is the curry tree. It, um, yeah, it didn't have a real good run through winter. It held all its leaves this time. Normally it dies back a fair bit, but we're starting to see the new shoots come through now. Things are warming up. This turmeric, we'll start to see shoots on it soon. I will be taking up root sections of that. Our little fruit salad tree, which is a lemon on top and Tahitian lime on the bottom, that's definitely coming. We'll be taking cuttings from that um, sweet potato. I think I'm leaving the mint and the herbs for Kira. We're taking a little piggy though. Over the back there we have, in amongst all those weeds, we have some ginger that has been overwintered, so that will be coming. I'll be taking out sections of this galangal, which has already started to shoot. It always holds on fairly well through winter. Taking sections of that. We can't take our bananas because we are zoned in banana zones in Queensland because it is a huge, massive commercial crop. So we can't move them up there. So we're gifting them to some relatives down here. And these ones here, the perennial leeks, they're a family heirloom, they're coming. Our little Ahe Amarillos, they are fruiting at the moment, but what we will be doing is cutting off the stalk. Now we're in focus, I'm letting these little branches take over. And um, yeah, just discarding those stalks. And we have some normal spearmint there that will be coming up. That little pouch of nasturtiums also has mint in it. So that will be coming up. And the Hockenauen spinach, along with the oregano, that will be coming up. The Hohenock, it died right back through um, winter here. So I was hoping you know, I would have some longer stems so I could do some cuttings and strike them so we didn't have to take the whole plant. So we might leave that here for a little while yet. Cardamom, which was aquaponically grown and grew into a monster, took over a bed. Uh, that is now in soil. It will be coming as a one-off pouch. The comfrey, we will be taking up little root sections of this and growing it as not only a fodder, but also a medicinal. Uh, Bianca makes a, an ointment out of the comfrey root. So we'll be taking that up there, many sections to plan out. It's also a fantastic dynamic accumulator and uh, cut and come again mulch. And our little Australian native ginger, which really didn't do well through winter this season, mainly because I had it behind this fence. Uh, it will be going up as well, as will all our old hoops, just because they will come in handy. Uh, a little bit of irrigation line and some other bits and pieces that we'll be taking up. We're not 100% sure whether we are taking up the blueberries um, as of yet, but yeah, we definitely have had some nice little harvests of them. Uh, Kira's been taking them off as well, along with the mulberries and making syrups out of them. So I did have a few berries down on these lower branches down here, but um, someone made quick work of them, didn't they, Jack? Along with the mulberries that were down on the lower branches, uh, but the mulberries are all pretty much all gone now. We've got a few small ones left. We also have this dear old Northern Highbush variety blueberry. She is absolutely covered in fruit at the moment, but she always fruits late. She's the last one to fruit and loads of fruit on there at the moment. Uh, this dear old lady, as you can see, 
She has, um, yeah, she's been neglected a little bit and there's a bit of the old wood that needs to come off. I really should have pruned it at the beginning of the season or the end of last season, I should say. But yeah, that just didn't happen, unfortunately. As for all the wicking beds we used to have, I have saved them. They are up the side of the house and along with all the wicking barrels that we still have around the place here and I've stockpiled it in other places, they will be going up and they will be our first year garden for sure. I'll also be growing in the root pouches and water trays just to get us cracking and some food on the table. But the actual garden design, it will take a while uh, to come to fruition, mainly because we want a little while at the place before we start making permanent garden plans and that sort of thing. Oh, and um, yes, I also have a good deal of packing to do. I started with my aquaponics, plumbing and bits and pieces in there, but I also have a very messy uh, under house area over there that needs to be packed up, uh, tools and bits and pieces. So. Yeah, there is going to be a lot on our plate over the next coming weeks. So as a result, you may not see a lot of aquaponics or backyard farm um, content coming to the channel over the next couple of weeks, uh, which is going to be um, make things interesting for a little while because we're pretty much all relying on my YouTube income uh, for the first couple of months just to get things done up there with all the money that um, we've had to go into the deposit and bits and pieces, so you don't need to worry about that. It's just been, yeah, a little bit tight, we'll put it that way, but yeah, all things are on the up and up. Um, so there will be new content coming to this channel once we move up there. I'll do little updates along the way. Um, there'll be a bit of a crossover from our farming channel um, because we will be making content for that and trying to grow that channel alongside this one. So feel, if you feel like subbing to the farm channel, There'll be a little link that pops up at the end here, as well as um, one down in the description. And for all you folks who are supporting us on the various platforms, thank you very much. I will continue to put out content for you guys, let you know where we're up to in the scheme of things on the move. And um, there will be um, little gems of aquaponics and gardening and bits and pieces because I will be filming uh, how we're collecting root stock and planting them out and getting them ready for the move. So there will be interesting little tidbits like that coming to the channel along the way and also for you supporters. But yeah, I will pretty much will leave it there. I've got to head upstairs now to a hangout with supporters. Thanks again, folks. And then um, I'll edit this and get it up for tonight for everyone else in YouTube land. So I do hope you're all well and happy and your gardens and aquaponics are booming and I'll catch you next video. Cheers, folks, and happy growing.